Welcome to the Air Gun Show. This week I'm going to be taking a look at a limited commemorative edition of the brilliant BSA Ultra CLX, which features not only a beautiful laminate stock, but also a new side lever action. But before that, I'm heading out to target grey squirrels and rabbits. Right, I'm in the woods this afternoon and I'm hoping to make a mixed bag, hopefully comprising grey squirrels and rabbits. Now the squirrels here are causing all of the usual problems but most significantly some pretty serious tree damage. Now I don't actually have any squirrel feeding stations set up here just yet but the weather's turned a bit cooler and the squirrels have really turned their attention to the gamekeeper's pheasant feeders. So that's going to be our first port of call. Um, now as for the rabbits, they're mostly confined to a hedgerow that runs parallel to the woods um, and they're feeding in a field, a grass field that's basically used for grazing for livestock. Um, now they're causing problems with their burrowing which is breaking up the bank but also very close by is a new section of woodland that's just been replanted and they're nibbling at the bark around the bases of those trees and if they completely ring bark them it'll kill the trees. Uh, the rabbits here are pretty nocturnal in their behaviour so we'll wait until the light goes and then swap over to night vision for them. Um, the kit that I'm using today is the FX Impact Mark II and I've got that paired with a Hawk Sidewinder scope and that's held on with the usual sports match scope mounts. Um, I've also got the Eagle Vision GoPro scope cam set up on here. Um, the impact that I'm using today is 2.2 caliber 30 foot pound and I'm just hoping that with it being a bit breezy that extra power is just going to keep it shooting straight. So that's the plan and the kit and I'm going to get settled in and hopefully get a few shots. But I've settled into a release pen which hasn't actually been used this season but the keeper has got a couple of feeders in here um, both of which are probably just over 20 metres from me which although that sounds close with it being windy today I'm quite comfortable taking much shorter shots um, also because the squirrels that come to these feeders are going to be thinking about the feed they're going to be distracted by the urge to fill their bellies and they're not hopefully not going to be paying too much attention to me um, cover wise again I didn't want to go to the trouble of setting up a hide because it's going to take too long we haven't got a lot of light left also it's going to create additional disturbance so I've just tucked myself in against a tree and propped against the tree, these have been here for a while now, a couple of platforms that the keeper uses to stop things from sinking into the ground. These ones weren't being used so I've just propped them up against the tree just to give me a little bit more of a backdrop and to break up my outline. Um, I don't want to talk too much so I'm going to shut up now and hopefully we'll see some squirrels. I had been prepared for a long wait after settling in, but it isn't very long before squirrel number one shows up at one of the feeders. Oh, a quick reload there because I thought for a moment that I'd hit that one a bit low. It flicked out from under the feeder but it's expired now just at the base of the tree. Um, we really didn't have to wait very long for that one. I'm hoping we'll see more pretty quickly because the sun's getting low and we're not going to have a lot of sunlight left. Um, and it's just dawned on me also that I forgot to use the scope cam for that one. So hopefully we've got something through the other camera. It turns out to be a significantly longer wait this time, but just as the light starts to fade, another squirrel decides to put in an appearance. Coming down the tree, mate.
This squirrel is very uneasy about the dead one near the feeder. I couldn't get a clear shot at it because of the vegetation in the way and now it's going back up the tree. What a lovely clean headshot that was. I thought I'd missed my chance there for a moment. Um, squirrel was coming down the tree but it was then spooked by the dead one and it looked like it was kind of shootable for a while but it was behind a haze of twigs and then there was a partially dead elder in the way um, and then it looked like I'd completely blown it when it turned around and headed back up the tree but obviously the draw of that feeder was just too much for it it turned back around offered me a nice clear shot right on the side of the tree, nicely silhouetted. Um, it's a shot that I just needed to give a touch of hold under, absolutely walloped it in the head, it's come down stone dead, really pleased with that one. Well, we've not seen any sign of squirrels since I shot that second one, and it's, it's no great surprise. It's probably because I've been talking too much to the camera. Um, the light's starting to go now, and I really want us to try to get into position for the rabbits before they start venturing out so we don't disturb them so much. So what I'm going to do now is pick up the squirrels, then we'll head over to where the rabbits are, and all being well, we'll bag a few. Right, well, I've settled into the field where we were expecting to see the rabbits um, and I've put on the night visor night vision adapter that we actually reviewed uh, a little while back so I'm going to be using that for real tonight and frustratingly the sky's cleared off and it's almost a full moon so it's not ideal night shooting conditions but we'll give it a shot and see what comes out There's one. That one was just behind the fence, probably about 25 metres away, so it needed just a touch of hold under, hit it really solid in the head, knocked it right over very cleanly. One was a bit further away, about 40 metres, but it still needed a touch of hold under with this setup. But I hope you can see through the footage that it just hit it like a sledgehammer and it was absolutely lights out. Um, quite a long wait for that one. In fact, I was on the verge of giving up, but just as well we didn't. Um, as you can probably hear also, we're quite close to an airbase and we've got a heck of a lot of helicopters and now sounds like jets going over. Um, in all honesty, it's probably not spooking the rabbits too much and in fact, it's probably helping to mask some of the noise that I'm making. Well, that makes three rabbits, and I'm gonna make that the last one because I'm starting to get really uncomfortable here. 
Um, it's been a decent session though. The night visor has performed very well. The one thing I have noticed is that the Sidewinder having a very high elevation turret does get in the way a little bit of the illuminator. Um, I suppose one way around that would be to turn it round and use it sideways so it's going past the lower turret or even put on um, an additional illuminator. But it's worked well enough this evening and as ever the Impact Mark II has performed flawlessly. Um, we've done a decent bit of pest control but most significantly I'm going home with a decent bit of meat for the pot so I'm going to uh, pick up these rabbits and head back to the car. A challenging day and night session there. Next up, the very special BSA Ultra CLX 160 Commemorative Edition. BSA Guns is currently celebrating its 160th anniversary. Now the Birmingham based gun maker has done a few things to mark this milestone in its rich heritage and the latest is this beautiful Ultra CLX 160 commemorative edition which has some great features that boost both its aesthetics and its performance. This exclusive edition of the Ultra CLX is limited to a run of just 160 guns in 177 and the same in 2.2. It costs £999 and apart from a seriously good air gun, you also get a lot of extras, including a 3 to 9 by 50 scope and mount, a BSA silencer, a tin of premium BSA pellets, a hard case and a signed certificate of authenticity. Now the gun itself also features some really neat tweaks including a sumptuous laminate stock and a side lever action. The stock is a lovely black pepper laminate by Manelli. Functionally it's great. It has a nice high cheek piece to ensure good eye alignment and it comes pre-fitted with quick release studs so you don't have to take a drill to it. Most significantly on this model, there's a commemorative etching on the underside of the pistol grip. The butt section is finished with a soft pad and the pistol grip is contoured just right to set you up for the trigger. Now the pistol grip and forend both feature patches of crisp stippling, which looks great and also feels really good in the hand. Now, this stock may be pretty, but it's also very functional. It makes for a comfortable fit and really adds to the CLX's shootability. The Ultra is renowned for being a compact air gun and that remains the case with this edition. It weighs in at 2.7 kilos unscoped and measures up at about 80 centimetres from end to end when you've got the muzzle brake on and obviously a little bit more with the silencer. Typical of all BSA air guns, Build quality is really solid and overall engineering looks excellent. This model boasts the Ultra's new monoblock chassis and is also equipped with a dovetail scope rail and a magazine which sits comfortably beneath it rather than getting in the way of scope mounting. Now the magazine is also BSA's new pellet friendly design which has increased overall capacity to 12 shots in both 177 and 22 calibers. The magazine is color coded red for 22 and blue for 177. It features an easy grip rotor and has a countdown window so you can easily see which shot you're on. Most significantly, it's driven by a fantastic side lever action. It's in just the right place, features a slick drop down handle and delivers silky smooth cocking and loading. Now bolt action ultras are great, but this one is on another level. Just as impressive is the trigger unit, which puts plenty of far more expensive air guns to shame. It's a fully adjustable two stage unit that also enables you to adjust the positioning and angle of the match type blade. Now this one was set up perfectly straight out of the box. It's deep first stage, 
comes to a distinctive stop before a very crisp and predictable second stage brake. The standard CLX features a new safety catch mechanism thoughtfully positioned at the rear of the action just in front of the stock's thumb cradle. Now the gun is safe when the catch is up and in the central position and you simply push it down and to the left when you're ready to shoot. Now this model has the same safety, only the catch is color coded to match the magazine. The Ultra's new CLX configuration has also brought about an increase in shot capacity and this sleek little cylinder now holds enough air to deliver 60 consistent shots in 177 caliber and more than 70 in 22 from a full 232 bar fill. Now that's more than enough for most outings and really impressive for such a compact little air gun. This one is producing a muzzle energy of 11.4 foot pounds with a variation within seven feet per second over a string of 10 shots. Now remaining air pressure is displayed on a clearly marked gauge at the front of the cylinder. I have said before that I don't like having to look from the muzzle end to read the pressure gauge. However, this one's been designed to give a wider field of view so you can read it from a safer sideways angle. Refilling with air is a very simple job with the CLX. Now the inlet is protected by a collar at the front of the cylinder which prevents dirt from getting into the air gun's internals. Give that collar a twist to reveal the inlet and then plug in the supplied probe and you're ready to start filling. Frustratingly, the rain has pushed us off of the range today, but I have done a lot of shooting with this air gun and it doesn't disappoint. It feels really good in the shoulder and that side lever action makes it an absolute joy to shoot. Most importantly, it is very accurate. The combination of consistent power output, a really sweet trigger and BSA's famous cold hammer forged barrel make it a really precise shooter. 10 millimeter groups are consistently achievable at 30 meters and this little BSA is still single holing at 40 meters. So that's the Ultra CLX 160 commemorative edition with side lever action. It is a terrific package but most importantly it's a chance to own a piece of BSA guns history. Now this is a very special air gun, but I reckon anyone who ends up owning it is gonna to wanna to get out there and shoot it. I'm a real fan of the BSA Ultra. It's a real shooter's air gun, and this version still demands to be shot. I just hope that they haven't all been snaffled up by the time you get a chance to watch this. I'm afraid that's all we have time for in this week's episode, but as ever, we'll be back again in a fortnight. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you aren't already a member of the BASC, have a look at their website and check out the benefits that you could be taking advantage of through Airgun Membership. Don't miss the award-winning Airgun Shooter magazine. It's packed with hunting features, reviews, tactics, and insight to help you become an even more successful shooter. Get your copy today, in shops or online.